because I tried to protect my family and my home and our community. But since then, uh, you know, the, don't, uh, the surface mines ordered that the stockpile be either moved or uh, done away with or covered, and Massey chose to cover the, uh, the stockpile with a dome, which is a, a large inflatable dome. And uh, the community is still getting a lot of dust because they still have like five or six open stockpiles on the property. I want to play some of the past comments of Massey Energy CEO Don Blankenship. He's a director of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. He's strongly opposed any legislation around climate change. These are highlights from the speech Don Blankenship delivered at the Tug Valley Mining Institute in West Virginia in November of 2008. I don't believe climate change is real. I do believe that the Arctic is uh, melting and the Antarctic is getting colder. I believe it's a normal cycle. Uh, this is the first speech in 22 years at the Tug Valley Institute that I've made in November while it was snowing outside. So it's not my greatest concern. Let me be clear about it. Al Gore, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, uh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're totally wrong. What they do is nonsense. And until we begin to call it what it is, people are going to misunderstand. Because when we talk about it in more articulate, educated ways, the American public doesn't get it. Pretty simple. They're all crazy. I mean, it is absolutely crazy. How, how can anybody run for office and say they're going to bankrupt the coal companies and be energy independent and get elected? I mean, how do you do that? How do you stop us from mining coal while we look for Indiana bats and put up windmills to kill them all? I mean, if, if they'd go ahead with the windmills, we wouldn't have a problem, you know? It's a, it is absolutely crazy. It is a great, it is as great a pleasure to me to be, sitter, to be criticized by the communist and the atheist of the Gazette as it is to be applauded by my best friends. Because I know that they're wrong. I mean, when you have an editor that's a, you know, an admitted atheist and when you have uh, people who are clearly of the far left communist persuasion, would you want them to speak highly of you? You know, it's, it's, it's really crazy when you look at it, and I reuse that word over and over, because what we've got is people cowering away from being criticized by people that are our enemies. I mean, are we going, would we be upset if Osama bin Laden were to be critical of us? I don't think so. That's Don Blankenship, the CEO of Massey Energy. Jeff Biggers, if you can put this in a bigger context, who Don Blankenship is and the role of Massey Energy today, its power. You know, Amy, just listening to that, it's, uh, it's quite tragic. And I think this accident, in, as our hearts and prayers go out with the coal mining families, and my own grandfather barely survived an explosion. Um, in southern Illinois and lived with bits of coal in his face for the rest of his life. You know, here's uh, the, one of the highest paid CEOs in the coal industry who mocks the welfare and the livelihood and the lives of coal miners who have carried the burden of our dirty energy policy for 200 years. Um, and, and here's a man who I believe has a total disregard of not only for his coal miners, but for the safeties of communities. You know, two years ago, of course, the Massey uh, Energy Company had to plead guilty to a criminal charge of a fire in 2006 at the Aracoma mine that killed two people. And then just uh, recently, they've had to pay some of the largest civil fines ever for their reckless mountaintop removal operations. You know, here's a man who's laughing at this situation who now wants to propose blasting on Coal River Mountain, for example, within a football field of the largest coal slurry impoundment in the hemisphere, that if it would break this earth and dam, as you've showed many times on your program, you know, the whole communities of the people in the Coal River Valley, over a thousand people, would have less than four minutes to flee a 70-foot tidal wave of toxic coal sludge. You know, unfortunately, Amy, we're in a situation where nationwide we're not taking the staggering human and environmental and health care crisis uh, of the coal industry seriously enough until we have these disasters. It's almost as if a crisis is never a crisis until we have these tragic disasters. And it just shouldn't be that way. We should be clamping down and making sure that people like Don Blankenship are truly regulated, if not put out of business. Actually, you uh, say it more strongly in the piece you wrote, What Killed the Miners, Profits Over Safety. Um, you say uh, 
Over 104,000 Americans and immigrants have died in our coal mines. According to one inspector, many, if not a majority, of those accidents should not be considered mishaps, but acts of negligent homicide. Do you think that Don Blankenship should be charged with negligent homicide? You know, I, I, I still am not sure we can comment on the details of this mine until we have the investigation to find out truly what happened. But I think it's important now that we start to broach the issue uh, of manslaughter, that if we have a company that willingly operates in a continual state of violations, and not simply toilet paper violations, we're talking about 50 violations in that mine were called unwarrantable failure, meaning these are life and death situations of ventilation, for example, which leads to methane gas. And of course, the methane gas buildup is nothing new. We've dealt with this for centuries. So if we have a company that willingly, openly, admittedly operates in this state of violence and, and violation to risk the lives of coal miners, I think it's very important we start to bring up the issue, is this, is this a matter of regulated manslaughter? Do we really need to discuss it in these, in, in these, uh, in these terms? You know, and I think obviously we have to wait for the investigation to come through, but I think we really need to have a serious discussion about some of the dirtiest aspects and the human lives that are lost through, through this kind of reckless coal mining. So interesting to note Don Blankenship's power as CEO of Massey. Um, he uh, shelled out more than $3 million of his own money in ads to help defeat a West Virginia state Supreme Court justice um, who had uh, he'd expected the justice to rule against Massey in an appeal of a $50 million award for a small coal company owner who convinced a jury that Massey had driven his company into bankruptcy. The new judge cast the deciding vote against the $50 million award. The U.S. Supreme Court later ruled that the new judge should have recused himself. And also, as a director of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Blankenship has helped buttress the chamber's tough position against any kind of climate change legislation despite the fact that many other corporate members have supported um, that legislation. Quick comment, uh, Jeff Biggers. Exactly. I think it really represents that we're, we're living in an, in an era now still of an incredible dirty process of the coal industry, that they'll go to whatever cost, being it buying off judges, uh, paying off, you know, the lobbyists. They spent over $120 million, the coal industry has in this last year, just in lobby money alone in terms of Washington, D.C. And I think that's what we're faced with right now is a real crisis uh, in our energy policy and a real crisis of denial. You know, I think one thing I really wanted to point out, Amy, is that, you know, three miners still die daily from black lung disease. You know, over a thousand coal miners every year. And that is still something we're not even grappling with. And that's once again the tip of the iceberg of this incredible human loss of lives that we're having in the coal industry today. I want to thank you both for being with us. Jeff Biggers uh, has written the book Reckoning at Eagle Creek, The Secret Legacy of Coal in the Heartland. And his family goes back generations in the mines. And Chuck Nelson, 30 years underground miner. In